Welcome. Welcome and thank you to those joining us here in the audience and to those viewing at home. This is the ninth and final in our series of community forums designed to provide a glimpse into the programs and supports we provide for students who attend Council Rock schools. 10 high school principals are here tonight, five each from Council Rock High School North and five from Council Rock High School South to share what a day in the life of a high school student is like. Both of these schools are in the Council Rock family and each has a full complement of highly qualified teachers who provide a rigorous academic program. They have unique identities that reflect the students, staff, and families that comprise its school community. And although these schools are separated by about four miles, they are bound together by an educational program delivered by experienced, exceptional teachers. In just 22 short days, our high school seniors will graduate in one of life's most important rites of passage. Crossing that threshold into the adult world of college, career, or military can be daunting. However, we at Council Rock make certain that our students are ready for graduation. We do this by working to cultivate each student's individual strengths and talents and provide the nurturing environment and academic challenges that each student needs for growth. Our students learn persistence, patience, and perspective. Our core value of keeping students first always is reflected in the many opportunities our students pursue both inside and outside of our classrooms. And our teachers, staff, and school leaders walk side by side with each student, making sure that no child faces a difficult challenge alone. No matter where their chosen path leads, Council Rock graduates are among the most prepared and valued in the state and across the nation. The quality and caliber of scholarships earned by our students is a testament to the quality of teaching and learning that takes place in both of these high schools each day. It also takes place at all grade levels and in each and every classroom. To those parents whose children are about to enter one of our high schools, my hope is that this presentation is both informative and reassuring. To those whose children are moving up a year, my hope is that you learn a bit more about our programs and supports. And to the wider Council Rock community, I am confident that this presentation will provide you with a better understanding of how both Council Rock High Schools work to continue to provide excellence in education. Please enjoy tonight's presentation and thank you again for listening. And now I'd like to introduce to you our Director of Secondary Education, Mr. Al Funk. Thank you, Dr. Sanko, and thank you for all who have come out this evening as well as those who are joining us via YouTube. Hopefully we'll be able to provide some information and insight into the many wonderful happenings at both of our high school campuses. I've had the good fortune of working at both Council Rock North and Council Rock South. I was an assistant principal at North for five years and I was a principal at South for nearly 15 years. And I can tell you it is a special privilege to work with students and families as they complete the very last segment of their K-12 journey within Council Rock School District. This year, as Dr. Sanko mentions, we will celebrate with commencement exercises on Thursday, June the 8th, 4 p.m. Council Rock North and 6 p.m. Council Rock South. Without further ado, I give you our two high school principals, Mr. John Raddick and Mr. Jason Triskevitz. Good evening, everyone. And again, my name is Jason Truskevich, principal of Council Rock High School North. And with me to my left is Mr. John Raddick, principal of Council Rock High School South. And we're extremely proud to be here this evening to speak about our high schools. Both North and South open the door to so many opportunities. This can occur through our academic program, performing arts, participating in our many clubs, and competing on the athletic fields. With this this evening are eight high school assistant principals. 
they're going to dive deeper into their specific areas and highlight key aspects of their duties, which will include an overview of our schedule, graduation requirements, special services, activities, and athletics, just to name a few. We also tell our students each year to make the most of their four years at the high school, and they listen. With us tonight are four high school seniors that are going to share some of their experiences so you can hear firsthand of what the high school is like. We are extremely excited for you tonight to get a better understanding of both high schools and see how amazing both North and South are. At this time, I will pass it over to Mr. Buff Raddick to introduce our student speakers. Good evening. As Mr. Chiskevich mentioned, we have four student representatives here with us tonight. I will introduce them in order and give you the topics that they will discuss. Kara Grossman from CR North will talk about arts and the student executive board. Ava Hartman from CR South will speak to transition programs and class office. Araf Parikh from Council Rock North will speak about culture and senior events. And Ryan Petrie from Council Rock South will speak about athletics. All are members of the class of 2023. So congratulations on your graduation that is upcoming. And at this time, I would ask Kara to come to the microphone. Thank you. Um, my name is Kara Grossman. I am a senior at Council Rock North. Um, I've been involved in many clubs and programs over the years, but my main involvement is in the Student Executive Board. At Council Rock North, this is a branch of the Student Council, and we are in charge of some of the four biggest events that the school has to offer. We are a committee of about 24 students. We plan a Blue and White Night, which is our fall gym night, where the seniors go against juniors and sophomores go against freshmen to earn points and bragging rights. We also organize the annual holiday project, which is a fundraiser where we collect money to purchase presents for underprivileged children in the area. The third event that we do is the talent show, which is school-wide, gives tons of students opportunities to put their talents on the stage. And the fourth event that we cover is Mr. CRN, which is our all-male beauty pageant featuring senior boys. Over this year alone, we have raised just over $10,000 for numerous charities, the main one being the Neighborhood Outreach Foundation, which is the district-wide charity this year. Apart from the Student Executive Board, I am the PR representative of the Council Rock North Speech and Debate Team. We have close to 100 members competing in both debate and speech categories. Debate categories are going to be what you expect. There's pros and cons sides to a case, and speech categories are often acting-based and kind of ways to represent um, social justice topics and bring awareness to some of the challenges that students face around the country. In my format, I blend news sources, poetry, and prose to represent a social dilemma. It's called Program Oral Interpretation. Last year, I competed with this at the Speech and Debate Association Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky, and placed 17th in the country out of just over 3,000 competitors. Further, <laughs> thank you. Um, further, I am a member of Symphonic Choir and North Boys Choir, which is our audition chamber ensemble. Both choirs compete in gigs around the area, and we also put on shows every fall and spring. The same is true for orchestra and band, who all offer um, certain opportunities to take band, orchestra, and choir as a class and participate extracurricularly. Um, and then the last thing about arts, which I can't necessarily speak to, I did take one drawing and painting class, but we have some incredibly talented students in the um, like drawing and painting arts, not just visual arts, and the district art show is coming up. So that's a lot that I have to offer, and I'm going to pass it on to Ava Hartman. I'm Ava. Um, I'm a senior at uh, Council Rock South. Um, I'm a member of our student council, um, a peer mentor, a writer for the Bucks County Courier Times, a varsity cross country and track and field runner, and I'm involved in um, numerous outside volunteer activities. 
So first, I'm going to lead you through the transition period for our freshmen, um, for our upcoming freshmen to high school. So before they graduate middle school, um, they're going to visit the high school in early June to prepare them for this transition. Um, this day, they'll be toured by our peer mentors, which is a group that I'm involved in. It's a group of um, juniors and seniors that dedicate their time to um, ensuring a smooth transition to high school for these <laughs> um, middle schoolers. Um, they're going to visit again in uh, middle of the summer for an orientation, um, which they will get an information session, and peer mentors should be there as well. And then their first day of school is going to be strictly the freshman class, um, the peer mentors, teachers, and administrators. That way they can ensure um, a less hectic environment for finding their classes on the first day, and the peer mentors can give them tours more specific to their course schedule. Um, and then throughout the year, the peer mentors are going to check in with these students um, once a month, and they do this for the first two marking periods just to, again, ensure a smooth transition from middle school to high school. They're going to answer any questions that they might have. They'll talk about topics um, from interim grades to extracurricular activities, and it's a really great program that we have here at South. Another really good program that I'm involved in at South is student government. It's probably my favorite thing that I've been involved in over my four years. So each grade has its own student government, and they all have their own responsibilities. Um, each student government um, is fulfilled with five elected officers and two teacher advisors that are going to continue with them over their four years as elected officials if they continue to run each year. Um, they're going to have different responsibilities. So the freshman year, they're really just focused on fundraising and um, uh, getting, a, getting a feel of what it's like to be a, a part of student government. Um, the sophomore year, they're just going to continue fundraising, and they'll also be involved in um, planning for their winter ball, which is the big thing that everyone does junior year, and they uh, worry about that. They worry about their junior prom as well. So then uh, junior year, they're going to be planning the junior prom and the winter ball. And then senior year is the big year where uh, responsibilities include fall festival, um, senior trip, senior prom, um, uh, graduation, and then senior luncheon. Um, I also wanted to touch on the election process. So the election process for student government um, includes a campaign packet where they need to get 100 signatures from their, um, their class. They need six signatures from their um, teachers and then a signature from their grade level principal. It's also they're also going to answer some questions based on their grades, um, why they would like to be involved in student office and um, their extracurricular activities. And then they give a speech um, to their student class explaining why they would like to be a part of student office and what they think they could contribute. And then voting is going to uh, take place electronically and they'll find out um, a few days after prior to the entire grade finding out. And yeah, and now I'm going to pass it. How do I pronounce your name? Arad. <laughs> I'm Rob Farouk, and I'm a senior at Council Rock North. Um, all my time at Council Rock North, I spent um, my time working with diversity committee, as well as starting and becoming president of the Asian Student Association at North. Uh, my time as a member of the diversity committee in the Asian Student Association has led to many improvements among not only the staff but and students, but also as a community at Council Rock North. Um, as president of Student Asian Student Association, um, we led many events, one of them being Holy at the Rock, which is a Hindu festival celebrating the f um, coming of spring by throwing colors at each other, listening to music, and just all overall having a great time. We've held two, one last year and one this year in March, and it was a great success. We had over 100 people show up, and a lot of people came up to me after the event um, telling them that telling me that they were so excited to come to the event, not only just to learn about new cultures, but people that are already a part of the culture, showing, the, showing their cultures and their festivities, their friends, and overall just having a great time. On top of this, we also um, created a Diwali video. Um, Council Rock recently um, has made Diwali an official holiday in the school calendar, and by creating a video through the Asian Student Association, we were able not to just educate people in our school, but also throughout the entire community about what it is, why we have off, and the importance it has on the Hindu, Sikh, and Jain, and Buddhist community. On top of that, we've also held many events for other um, cultures, one being for the Chinese New Year, where we 
took a bunch of students to the Dragon of Newtown and we learned about the culture from different students and enjoyed the holiday. As a member of the diversity committee, we, me and a group of um, fellow students um, attended faculty meetings and different student assemblies, led different small breakout rooms and assemblies and just trying to discuss how we can make Council of North a better place and just teaching different ways to foster community and welcoming all people regardless of their faith and backgrounds. On top of um, the diversity community, many other clubs have sprung up this year after um, all these things such as Black Student Union and Jewish Student Union at Council Rock North and both clubs have done an amazing job in bringing their communities together and trying to bring some more school spirit but as well as more diversity in Council Rock North. So as you can see, the seniors are about to leave in 22 days, which is crazy. Um, but as the year winds down, the last few weeks are here to celebrate our seniors and an amazing job that we've all done and celebrating their achievements and their future endeavors after Council Rock. So this weekend, Council Rock North seniors had their senior prom at the Crystal Tea Room in Philadelphia. And this Friday, Council Rock South seniors will be having their prom, I believe, at the Constitution Center in Philadelphia as well. So great thing and it's a great way to kick off the future activities that we have planned for the rest of the school year. Senior finals span from June 1st to June 5th. And after that, June 5th, um, both schools will be holding their cap and gown distributions at Council Rock North at 1045 and at Council Rock South at 10 a.m. On June 6th, both schools will be having their senior car parade at Council Rock North will begin at 10 a.m. at and at Council Rock South will be at 9 a.m. Um, also that evening will be our senior recognition night. Both schools will be holding it um, 7 a.m. at Council Rock North in the senior gym for the senior CR and seniors and in the CR South Auditorium at 6 p.m. On June 7th, graduation, graduation rehearsals and ticket distributions will both ha happen at both schools. At Council Rock North, it will begin at 9.45 and at Council Rock South at 11 a.m. Council Rock South will be holding their senior luncheon at 1.30 in the cafeteria, and Council Rock North seniors will be enjoying a senior picnic at 3 p.m. at the CR North soccer fields. And the big day, June 8th, will be graduation on, in Council Rock North, will start at 4 p.m. at the Walt Snyder Stadium, and Council Rock South will be holding their graduation at 6 p.m. at Council Rock South Gymnasium. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Council Rock for giving me op like a amazing opportunity to not only become educated and go to amazing schools, but also um, allowing me to explore my interests and really do stuff where um, things where I believe in and I really enjoyed my time. So now I'm gonna pass it over to Ryan to talk about athletics. How's everyone doing tonight? Ms. Gormley for the response. Um, within my four years of Council Rock South, I have played numerous sports. I've played three years of varsity baseball. Due to uh, COVID, we did not have a freshman year season. Um, I played freshman year basketball, and I've played four years of varsity golf. I'm going to talk about my time there, the preseason, the off season, during the season, and the time commitment, which is what I'll start with. The time commitment's the big thing. You spend countless hours after school practicing. Um, game day, you're there from 3.15 on till 6. I actually just rushed from a game at Truman. Um, it's a huge commitment, and with that comes your grades and your academics that you need to keep up with because, of course, you're a student first, athlete second. That is one thing that our coaches at both Council Rock South and Council Rock North preach. You need good grades because you're more than just an athlete with wearing this Council Rock jersey. And we're going to lead into the off season, which is optional, but every coach appreciates you showing up, even though they know you have other opportunities and other time commitments. Then once you get through that, you have practices and hitting clinics for baseball, lifting for football, lifting for basketball, whatever you do for that sport. It helps to get into the swing of things to get ready for the season, which I just talked about. And then the off season, pretty much the same thing. You optional workouts, late, low, if you're struggling with grades, doing whatever you need to do. 
So now we're going to talk about dealing with multiple sports. And with multiple sports, it's even harder to get good grades and keep up your good GPA and academics because every day after school, you're there till 6, 6.30, playing games, practicing, doing whatever you need to do to keep up on the athletic side of things. But the big thing that I've learned through Council Rock is that the coaches want you and need you to do well in the classroom. And I really appreciate the coaches that have pushed me to do well in the classroom because it is, it is paid off and it is amazing. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is the difference between individual sports, of which I've played at golf, and a team sport, which I can talk about with baseball. The, indi the individual sports that Council Rock has provided me, and even though I've not played all of them, provided everybody, I've, t I've learned lessons about keeping my mental game strong, um, perseverance within myself, and making sure that I'm doing the best I can personally, which can lead me to doing well in the classroom and outside in the real world. And then team sport has given me com camaraderie, leadership, and just great opportunities to make some best friends. And I really appreciate Council Rock and the school district in general to provide me these opportunities. Good evening, my name is Dan Griesbaum. I am currently the ninth grade principal at Council Rock North. Good evening, and I'm Susan Gormley, currently the 11th grade principal at Council Rock South. And it's quite appropriate that we came on after our students because many of the events and activities that they spoke about are directly related to the responsibilities that we have. But before we go there, I wanna talk a little bit about what a grade level principal does. All right, we are very fortunate in our district that each grade level has their own principal and we follow our students from the time they start in ninth grade through to 12th grade. And obviously this allows us to get to know our students much better as well as their families. And we see some great success for the students both academically and emotionally as they make their way through their high school careers. Up here on the screen are just some of the things that we are involved in. Um, as well as dealing with um, our students and our grade levels, we are also liaisons to certain departments, academic departments. So we will be involved with the teachers in those departments and we super supervise and evaluate the staff in those departments as well. So both Sue and I are involved in budget and activities. Um, with the budget, usually that starts around the middle of November um, we'll get a number from the business office and then it is up to us to break that number down into the various um, sections for the building and they consist of all of the departments, the uh, individual academic departments, uh, graduation, principal budget, and then also the building budget. Um, athletic budget is separate. The athletic directors will talk about that in, in a few minutes. Um, we look at everything. We break it down according to their needs. Um, the building budget is there to help supplement what the, what the um, individual department budgets cannot afford to do. Um, it's, a, it's a give and take with them as the year goes on. The, the building budget then supplements all of that and, and helps out where, where we need to, especially if there's uh, larger, um, larger expenditures that are, that are needed. All right, as I mentioned earlier, we are responsible for the activities in the building. Uh, before you were printed, many of the larger activities that we are involved in, and there's so many different aspects of each of those activities. It's not just, hey, we're gonna have a senior prom, but we work with our class advisors who advise our students um, and uh, in, in um, getting, getting the venues, uh, working with the district on, on getting this, the contracts approved. We, uh, it involves also ticket sales, uh, getting the DJs, the food, all the things that, that are involved in having a very nice event. So, uh, as you, and it's a lot, it really is a, a lot of uh, stuff that goes on when we plan these activities. If you take a look at, uh, usually at Fall Festival, that's our largest uh, school-wide event, very, it's at the beginning of the school year, so it's a great way for our school community to uh, get together. It's an opportunity for our clubs and activities to raise money at that time, and it gets uh, 
collect for money into their student activities accounts. Obviously, you see the senior trip, the senior proms, um, homecoming dance at North. At South, we do not have a homecoming dance, but we have a winter ball. Uh, and that is really super because that's the entire building can come in for that dance. It's, it's really remarkable. Uh, and then obviously we both have our blue-white nights or our blue-white and gold events. Uh, we mirror each other in that respect. And then, and as the students mentioned earlier, that's when our classes compete against each other in different activities and earn points. So these are some of the items also in addition to what was on the previous slide. Um, uh, the kids talked about talent show. They talked about Mr. CRN. You also have the various uh, drama departments, Golden Wings at South, Sock and Buskin at North. Um, they both put on three shows a year. Usually there's a fall play sometime at the beginning of November, um, a spring musical usually at the beginning of May, and then sometime throughout January or February, they will also put on a little show that uh, not quite as extensive as what the fall and the spring productions are, but they are they do put them off. Um, Sue talked about being with, uh, with the advisors and uh, the snack shack you see up there at va various sporting events. Uh, we work the snack shack. It's a chance for the classes to um, raise money through through selling the different foods and stuff. This is really critical at the football games. Um, that's probably the largest fundraisers for the classes, um, especially whoever is the home team of the North-South game. Um, they usually make the most money. That's a big night for them. So let's talk a little bit about the clubs. You'll see at each high school, we have over 75 clubs that are sponsored. Um, and uh, we also have an activities fair at the beginning of the year. It's actually the very first day when our ninth graders come in. That is part of their schedule. We will have our representatives, student representatives from all the clubs um, in, a, in a special area where the students can come in and talk to those officers about what goes on in the club and try to generate some interest for them. All right, we also have an activities fair later in September where the entire school can then come in and, and you know if you have students who may be 10th or 11th grade and are thinking about amateur radio club I heard a lot about about you know I heard a lot about that this year I'd like to know more that gives kids an opportunity to talk to the officers and l learn more about those clubs as uh, our roles and we are responsible for approving all of our fundraising through our clubs uh, Dan and I are also responsible for approving the generate the generation of a club and there is this particular process for that all right students uh, come and they get proposed, I would like to start this particular club, but they need to have an advisor and they need to have students, a certain number of students who would be interested in them, and then we start the club. We advertise the clubs throughout the building. You will see posters hanging everywhere about the clubs when they meet. Uh, we also have a website uh, on both of, uh, web page on both of our sites uh, that identify the clubs, the advisors for the clubs, when they will meet and things like that. So students have uh, equal access and uh, quick access to learn more about the club if they'd like to uh, join. Here we go. And now to Anthony and Justine. Thank you very much and good evening everyone. As Mr. Griesbaum said, my name is Anthony Benziel. I am the 10th grade principal at Council Rock North. And my responsibilities uh, for uh, that role uh, are that I uh, build the master schedule with a lot of help from various people in the building. I uh, oversee Mark reporting professional development and curriculum, in addition to overseeing some liaison departments, and then obviously all the other things that come with being a grade level principal and traveling with those students for the four years, which we believe is really important in getting to know our students. And I'm gonna turn it over to Justine so you can introduce yourself. Hi, good evening. I'm Justine McEcker, and I just joined the administrative staff yesterday, um, so bear with me tonight. Um, Lynn Cariello is retiring at the end of the school year, so I'm taking her position as um, she'll be leaving as the grade 12 principal, and I'll be starting with an incoming freshman class, so I'm very excited to meet the new class coming into South. So Anthony is going to start. Thank you very much. So we thought tonight would be an opportunity for us to highlight what it means to be a high school student at North or South 
and what are the requirements that in 22 days these students in front of us have met, uh, which is to earn 23 credits or more uh, so that they can get their high school diploma. And so the graduation requirements for our high schools are that they must obtain 23 credits. Those 23 credits are distributed among the areas that you see up there on the uh, slide. In addition to the credit requirements, there are some state requirements uh, related to the Keystone exam, which actually is going on this week in both high schools. And so those uh, are really the basics. Uh, we'll get into some more uh, scheduling things in just a moment, but if you notice, the only area in which you need four credits is English, and then the rest of those areas are distributed three credits all the way down to 1.5. And the best part about as you get into your junior and senior year is you have uh, opportunities to take elective courses, which would allow you to pique your interests, follow your passions, and really kind of dip your toe into the world of maybe an art class or a business class or uh, a fine arts or music class. And so let's take a look at what a typical ninth grade schedule would look like. So the ninth grade or high school schedule in general is very different than that which is found at Newtown or Holland Middle. Uh, school starts at 733 and goes until 215 and we run on a day one and day two schedule. Most of our core elective course, most of our core courses are full year day one, day two courses. But as you get into your junior and senior year or 11th and 12th grade year, you have elective courses that are offered either semester based or on a day one and day two structure. And so as a ninth grader, you would come in, obviously everyone would have English because you need four credits of English. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you have it first period. Uh, you would have a social studies, a science, a math, obviously lunch, and then you would have uh, an alternate day elective. The thing to point out here is that ninth graders don't have a ton of flexibility in their schedules, but that opens up tremendously as you move on into the upper years of the high school experience. So let's look at what that looks like as you progress through 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. As you move from left to right on the slide, you will notice that there's a lot of room for electives as you get into your 12th grade year. And that is intentional and by design. And so what we encourage our students to do is to really think about what does post high school look like. We encourage them to look at what is their career trajectory. Is it a four year traditional college? Is it going to be to take a gap year and then go and maybe do college part time and then do something else? Are you going into the military? or? Are you going into some type of trade? And so that allows you to fulfill the requirements not only for the graduation of the, and getting that diploma, but it also allows you to start thinking about what do I want to do after high school? And again, that pathway can look so different for every single student. And we feel that here in Council Rock, we provide that foundation to explore those pathways. To highlight some of the special curriculum features that we offer in addition to the alternate day courses, we have a gifted program that has ex been expanded this year, or I'm sorry, going to be expanded uh, in the fall of 2023. Uh, we've added additional courses in that program. We offer obviously honors and advanced placement courses. Those advanced placement courses give our students an opportunity to earn college credit if they score typically a three or higher on those exams. Um, we have our library media center in both high schools, which provide our students with an opportunity and a place and a venue to gather not only during the school day to work collaboratively on projects, to do research for research papers, but our uh, libraries are also open once per week at each high school to provide additional opportunity for our students to go and engage there and get the learning that they need. We have obviously a special education program for our special needs students and something else that I'd like to highlight is our Middle Bucks Institute of Technology, which continues to grow in popularity amongst our Council Rock students. Um, as you all know, the trades are a growing, growing industry and MBIT uh, is no longer what people used to refer to as the tech school of long ago. MBIT truly is a technical and career center that a lot, for a lot of students is a springboard into college. It is a springboard into a pathway that maybe 20 or 30 or 40 years ago wouldn't have necessarily opened those doors, but today it does. And then finally, additional opportunities. We have college accelerated programs. We do have uh, things related to early graduation. Obviously, our counselors at both high schools make sure that we are always meeting the NCAA eligibility requirements to make sure that you know the classes that our students are taking for our athletes who particularly want to participate in either D1 or D2 athletics uh, have those requirements met. 
We offer service learning opportunities, and something that we're really proud of is some of our dual enrollment agreements that we have, not only with uh, Gwen and Mercy University, but also with our literally our neighbor, uh, Bucks County Community College. And we're really excited about the partnership that is forming there and for what the future holds and what those opportunities will bring for our students here in the district. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Justine. So one thing that COVID taught us is that we need to know how to do things virtually. So Council Rock is growing their virtual course offerings. Um, this past year, we had about 175 students take four courses um, virtually that's built into their schedule throughout the day. The students go to the library to take those classes. Um, it provides flexibility. It's obviously built for a certain type of student, um, but it's a good experience because as our students who are leaving us soon will quickly learn on the college world, that is how a lot of our colleges are moving towards some of their courses. So that is one opportunity that way. Another thing that we wanted to touch on, and Anthony talked a lot about um, the schedule. When you're taking your classes in high school, when you step in the door on the first day, your GPA begins. So what a GPA is is your grade point average. Our scale is listed here, so we are on a 4.8 scale for our advanced placement courses, so that's a weighted GPA. So an A in that course earns a quality point compared to an A in an accelerated um, or all other courses. So something to think about as students enter the high school, your GPA starts on day one. It's a very important thing to pay attention to, um, and your counselors will work with you and your teachers to ensure that you know what that is. I'm now gonna pass it on to Mr. Scott and Mr. Lair. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nate Scott. I'm currently the 11th grade principal at Council Rock North, and with me is Mr. Lair, 10th grade principal at Council Rock South. So our office is known as the Special Services Office, and uh, some of the things that we do in our office, uh, we start in the wee hours of the morning, uh, making sure that uh, school can be staffed properly for the upcoming day by working with our substitute teaching program. Uh, a big part of our program also deals with uh, situations that maybe aren't going according to plan. Uh, so when things might go awry for students or for families, we have two programs that we think are very helpful. One is called CARES. That's our student assistance program. And that really encapsulates any issue that a family may be having uh, that is interfering with their child's ability to learn. And so uh, we can help uh, families connect with resources in the community and in the school uh, to help in any regard. Also, our child study team is a multidisciplinary team that's made up of counselors, teachers, administrators, nurses, and that team is involved in helping make academic decisions and academic recommendations for students who might be struggling or who just need some more input. Finally, we also work with the nursing and uh, our security team, and Scott's gonna talk a little bit about our security program. Thank you, Nate. Um, <clears throat> one thing we do exceptionally well here in Council Rock is uh, school safety. Um, obviously, uh, health and safety of our students and staff is the most important thing. Uh, that trumps uh, academics, ac athletics, uh, any um, extracurricular activity. It's something that we, uh, it's a very high priority for us. Uh, we, both schools uh, have school resource officer. We have Mr. John Lobb from Northampton Police Department and uh, Renee Hurst from uh, Newtown Police Department. So uh, it, it's wonderful to have them in the school um, uh, they work as a liaison between the school district and the police department and they do an exceptional job each and every day. Uh, we are also blessed to have two uh, security staff members at each school along with hall monitors, uh, cafeteria monitors, etc. Uh, all of them carry radios which is uh, very, very important to communicate at, at all times. Uh, obviously the first thing in the morning that they do once the students have arrived safely. Uh, they go to the perimeter of our school building and lock, make sure all of the perimeter doors are locked. Okay, uh, they are locked at all times. We do not prop doors at Council Rock because God forbid something were to happen. Um, we, our hall monitors obviously 
uh, go up and down the hallways, check restrooms, uh, communicate all the time with us, which is great. Uh, as far as our security camera system, uh, both north and south roughly have about 200 cameras, uh, inside and outside. And uh, we, we have just uh, got a new system, it's called WiseNet, and it is an exceptional tool uh, when it comes to uh, if there it happens to be a critical incident or if we have to investigate a situation that occurred in the school as well. Uh, we do have monthly drills, okay, the fire drills obviously, which we're all accustomed to where you, you know, get out of the building as quickly as you can, you line up, we take roll, uh, make sure everyone's accounted for and then they come back into the building. Okay, there's lockdown drills, safe shelter as well, if there were to be a uh, a bad storm where you needed to get away from windows or whatever, you get to the interior of the school, uh, we do that as well. The last thing I want to talk about is one thing that I'm really, really proud of uh, that our district uh, has implemented, and that's the ALICE program. And all of our students know that, uh, that ALICE stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, um, Counter, and Evacuate. We have practiced all of those steps in the program, okay? and. Um, you know, the students know where the escape uh, routes are or the route out, the routes out of their classroom to get outside. Uh, they know, just for example, that if there were a critical incident, okay, they know when they leave the building, they're to leave the building, you know, with their hands up, and we process a lot of those things with them. Uh, one thing we did with the February drills, and I believe North did it as well in February, is that we've invited in uh, the fire departments, uh, local fire departments, EMS, uh, the police departments, and uh, once we uh, implemented the drill, okay, there was a big uh, debriefing session in our faculty rooms, which uh, really, really, really proved to be beneficial. Uh, you know, the one thing that was really important is that all these departments sort of got the lay of the land and they understand how the building's laid out, so if there were something to happen, you know, they could e easily access things and know which... Uh, which areas of the school we are referencing, uh, and it's really building good relations as well. We, uh, you know, we got the opportunity to meet a, a lot of people who do important jobs in the community, which is great. Um, I know we have another uh, drill scheduled for May in both schools, and uh, we're looking forward to that as well, and we're gonna continue to grow and get better and better at this. And Nate's gonna finish it off with one last slide. So as was mentioned earlier, we happen to be giving this presentation in the middle of our Keystone exam week. This is where the students can all groan. It may not be their favorite week, but uh, these are the end of course assessments that are given uh, through the state of Pennsylvania. And they are really designed to assess proficiency in three subjects, algebra one, biology, and literature the literature uh, test is given to students in their 10th grade year when they take English 10. Uh, students must sit for these exams at least once per state regulations. What I always try to remind students and parents is that this is a valuable tool to give more feedback to you as a family so that you understand how your child is doing in those subject areas compared to the entire state of Pennsylvania, not just compared to their class or their school. Most uh, recently, uh, Pennsylvania passed Act 158, which requires a number of uh, pathways for students to meet in order to receive a Pennsylvania diploma. For most of our students, the Keystone exams is the way that they can reach that pathway by passing one or more of the Keystone exams uh, students are showing that they are proficient. If students do not do well in Keystone exams, there are other pathways, and this is where the school jumps in as a whole to help with other alternative means to meet those pathways. So uh, the Keystone exams, I think, are an important part, but they are not all uh, everything to a school year. Uh, we, we certainly trust that our students work hard at them, do their best, and as we say, if they do their best, uh, we'll take care of the rest. They don't have to worry about anything. We're gonna pass it along now to our athletic directors, Mr. Tim Daly and Ms. Vanessa Robtison.
Well, once again, thank you uh, for coming out today. Uh, once again, my name is Mr. Tim Daly. I am the ninth grade principal and athletic director for Council Rock South. Uh, part of uh, my duties, I am the world language and social studies liaison. Uh, we also deal with grounds, custodial and maintenance, grade level discipline, and as also athletics. I'm gonna pass this over. Thank you. I am Ms. Vanessa Rothison, and I am the athletic director and 12th grade principal at Council Rock High School North. Um, similarly, I uh, oversee world language, PE and health, and art. Um, also graduation grounds, custodial and maintenance, um, grade level discipline, I think we all do. And then uh, the athletics piece, which is really all encompassing with budget, transportation, hiring officials, um, maintaining compliance with the PIAA, District 1, and the Suburban 1 League. So uh, as, as Sue and Dan have spoken about um, with activities, same goes with athletics. Uh, we feel that um, students in high school over the course of four years really should be involved in some sort of athletic uh, activity uh, or some other activity as well. It's, it's something that's very fulfilling for them. For athletics themselves, for Council Rock School District, North and South, uh, we are members of the Pennsylvania Inter Interscholastic Athletic Association, PIAA, uh, also the Suburban One League. So the Golden Hawks of Council Rock South and the Indians of Council Rock North, that's the, our level of play that we compete into. So participating in high school athletics, again, it, it's rewarding. It's, it's, it's a healthy competition. Uh, it's where students uh, can uh, build camaraderie with each other. Uh, they, they, can, they build teamwork. Uh, they build leadership skills. For high school athletics, it also is a, a step possibly to uh, post-secondary in, in the collegiate level uh, where they can go into a D1, D2, or even a D3 school. With high school athletics, um, it provides this, this stimulating and, and enriching environment for them that they can, they can gain these characteristics that's going to take them past high school uh, and, and into uh, being uh, promising adults. I'm going to pass this over to Vanessa. So we offer 27 different programs at the hi both high schools. Uh, we have a variety of levels. So we have some freshman sports, uh, football, freshman, boys basketball, and baseball. And then the majority of the others typically have JV and varsity. There are a couple that are varsity only. Um, but we have additional kids on the team that get to compete regular season beyond just being, quote unquote, a varsity athlete. Um, my big pitch is always for high school kids, get involved. Stay connected and engaged to your school. So whether it's an activity or an athletic, it's a great opportunity when you're in high school to make a connection um, and, and really, really be involved. Um, there are just many, many opportunities and we have sports that sometimes, uh, if you haven't done a sport in the past, are more friendly to um, trying something new, such as our cross country, track and field, um, and, and spring track, the gains that you'll see um, that our athletes will have that are maybe new in those areas are, are, are tremendous and, 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 and awesome and lifelong sports um, and, and tennis and, and things of that nature. Uh, we do have some very competitive programs and there can be, um, there are tryout selections and there can sometimes be kids who do not make the team. Uh, the other piece that I want to really make sure that I point out is, there, a, as I believe your name was Ryan, Ryan pointed out so, so nicely, it is a big time commitment. And um, we do have the three seasons, but just because we have the three defined seasons, all the teams typically work out in the out of season as well. Uh, we did put the windows for those seasons up there for you uh, because I strongly encourage you not to plan vacations during those particular time periods. Uh, it just um, extends the opportunity for your student to be able to fully participate and get engaged. So one of the things with our student athletes, uh, and as you know with Council Rock School District, is that it's, it's students first always. And one of the things that we uh, definitely push forward is the academic part of all our students. Um, as students, it's, it is a, it's a privilege to be in an athletic event, but we want them to be uh, academically sound as well. So we do have a academic, academic eligibility qualifications. 
Um, and we know that students, as, as Ryan has mentioned and Vanessa has pointed out as well, it is a very large time uh, consuming part of their lives. Uh, you have athletes that are up at 6 a.m., they're going to school, they're competing with practice, they're competing in events, they're coming home, especially if it's, a, if it's a, an away game. So we want to make sure that they have that time commitment, but also uh, not only to the sport, but also to their academics. Uh, and we know that sometimes students do struggle, so we do offer clinics uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And one of the things that Vanessa and myself stress uh, to the coaches and to the players is that clinics, clinics come first. Um, you know, practice will come second. If a student is struggling or needs a, a extra assistance, then they, they are to go to clinic first. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it does run, um, the eligibility will come into play. Uh, we run weekly reports. Our teachers put in uh, the grades uh, every Friday. We run the reports uh, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, and then if a student uh, does fa uh, fall behind academically, uh, then they do get uh, they have about a week off uh, in regards to sports. This way it kind of gets them back on track. Uh, and then we also offer as many supports that we can for them. Um, and then, but usually what ends up happening is after that first week, they, they usually bounce back pretty quickly because we also get the coaches involved as well, uh, as well as their teachers. So it's, it's, it's a community effort to make sure that these student athletes are, are really at the top of their game uh, sports-wise and academically-wise. Just wanted to touch base with tryout procedures. We have uh, an athletic training system, and that is where our both high schools families will submit their SIPI forms, which is our PIAA physicals. Um, it is updated again this year, so if you're just looking at the physical form that you used last year, you do have to submit a new one every single year. Um, the date is, it can't be earlier than June 1, and it is good for the school full school year, uh, and then expires at the conclusion of the spring season or May 31. Um, the big piece I always like to point out on this is section six. That is a piece of paper that you have to bring to your doctor to certify you as being physically fit enough or healthy enough to participate in athletics. That can be emailed to the athletic trainer or it can be submitted on ATS. Additionally, we do provide um, concussion education and baseline testing, impact baseline testing, as part of the requirements for tryouts. We do not let anyone try out, or even if it's a sport that we do not have cuts in, participate if they do not have this piece completed in advance. This is pivotal to make sure that everyone who's participating is safe to do so. So as Vanessa talked about uh, in regards to player athlete safety, uh, one of the things that we also look towards is officials, fan behavior, and also athlete behavior as well. Um, it, it's interesting, you, you see all these um, signs out there in regards to officials, they're, they're officials or humans, they're, 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 they're husbands, they're wives, uh, and we want to let kids be out there and play. Uh, I saw an interesting sign to one day where it said, no professional contracts will be handed out today at the end of the game. Uh, and that's one of the things that we hold true, is that we want everybody to be competitive, we want everybody to be safe. So one of the things that we encourage uh, is the players play, allow the coaches to coach, uh, officials to officiate. Uh, everybody is giving up their time, their energy, uh, and, and being dedicated to, to not only the sport, but also to the athletes. We want to be able to give them that ability. We want the fans to be able to cheer. Uh, during the beginning of the events, we, we read the SOL statement uh, that talks about behavior. One of our goals is to exhibit uh, sportsmanship-like uh, sportsmanship behavior at all contests. Because that's, that's what we want our student athletes uh, to put out on the field, but on and off the field as well. Uh, we ask our fans to cheer for them in a positive manner. And that's one of the things that Vanessa and I encourage at our events, especially when we have our rival events. Uh, we want our student athletes to be, you know, professional and, and to have fun, but also to be respectful of each other. Uh, we know the officials, they're going to make mistakes. Not everybody's going to you know, call that ball a strike the way you want it to be, or, or there is going to be a, a, a bad foul call sometimes in basketball, but, but they are human. Uh, for football games, elementary and middle school games, uh, we do ask uh, that uh, students are uh, um, accompanied by an adult. Again, that's not only for the safety of that student, but, but really to make everybody be able to, to enjoy the event all together. 
And then last but not least for us, uh, we just wanted to recognize that we do both schools host athletic college signings uh, each year. Uh, we are super fortunate that our kids are academically prepared to continue their athletic journeys and also athletically. Uh, so we do like to honor, recognize, and celebrate our students uh, at both schools. And um, they are attending Division One, Division Two. Division three community colleges, all different levels of opportunities, and, and it's important to, for, for us to, to recognize them, and, and sincerely, it's one of my favorite days to get to watch our students uh, commit to their, their next level, both athletically and, of course, most importantly, academically, um, once they leave us. Uh, and, and our kids are going to Ivy League schools. I mean, a any school that you can think of, the, the students at Council Rock, they put the work in it on the field as well, really have the opportunity uh, to, to, to do that. So we are proud of them, and we will, at this point, turn the mic back over to Dr. Senko. <laughs> Thank you. I think our four seniors want to repeat this. Kara, you've not let anybody go yet. I thought you were going to dismiss everybody. No. So tonight we are we are fortunate, um, and thank Dr. Felicia Ganther for her patience along with her folks she brought along with her. Our special guest speaker tonight is Dr. Felicia Ganther, the president of the Bucks County Community College. Dr. Ganther has an extensive background in post-secondary education, and she will share with us tonight <clears throat> the role that the community colleges play in planning for college success and beyond. Dr. Ganther. Dr. Ganther holds a bachelor's and master's of arts degree from Norfolk State University in Virginia, a Juris Doctorate from University of Illinois, Johns Marshall Law School in Chicago, and a PhD in Community Resources and Development from Arizona State University. Bucks County Community College has historically been a good neighbor to the Council Rock School District on many levels, including offering dual enrollment courses that allow Council Rock students to earn college credit while still in high school. Additionally, our strong relationship benefits students by providing a pathway that prepares students for career and transfer opportunities so that they can fulfill their educational goals and enter the workforce more fully prepared. Please join me and our administrative team and our students who are here in welcoming Dr. Felicia Ganther. Good evening. Okay, good evening. Okay. Um, I am humbled and honored to be here with you this evening just to share a little bit about Bucks County Community College. And we are going to go through our, our presentation as quickly as we can because for many of us, we've been working all day. And I know that I'm standing between Wendy's, Taco Bell, Chick-fil-A, I don't know. So I'm gonna try to get through this quickly. Um, the reason why I'm here and the reason why uh, I want to share with you th that are uh, out in YouTube land or watching on the, the district's website is uh, I've, I've been in Bucks County for 22 months. And the one thing that I hear is that Bucks County Community College is the best kept secret. And I think that uh, that's, that's a shame. It's a shame because there's so much that the college has to offer that it's so important for us to be present in our community to share the opportunities with you. And while we are talking about high school students, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade, this information is also good for families. We educate from little, little children all the way to those who have retired and are looking to come back to find another passion for their lives. So we have, we have a lot for everyone. Let me give you just a quick background, and then I'm going to toss it over to my um, associate provost who's going to talk a little bit about dual enrollment. We are huge, but we have plenty of space for more. Uh, we have about 65,000 students who are involved in various uh, programs with us that may not necessarily align to what we call academic credit. 
We have about 10,000 students currently in academic programs on our campuses. We have uh, a Lower Bucks, we have Newtown, which is closest to all of you, and then we have a Percocy, which is uh, farther north, closer to uh, Quaker Town. Um, we have more than 20, almost 30, uh, high school dual enrollment programs, and I'm gonna ask our associate provost to talk about those. But we have 42 transfer programs, which is amazing. That means that there are 42 paths to university programs. We have 22 occupational programs, and occupational programs is like nursing, as an example. We had uh, 68 graduates tonight from our nursing program. Incredible. That is incredible. So that's an occupational. Then we have 27 certificate programs. And some of those programs um, are less than 12 months. Some of them are one month. And I'm going to ask my uh, vice, vice president over workforce to talk a little bit about those opportunities. We are located everywhere. And if we're not somewhere and there are people that want to have a class, we will find our way there. We're committed to being the premier educational partner for every single entity in this county because we want to make sure that everyone who wants an education, a certificate, a degree, a path to prosperity, that Bucks County Community College is the bridge that is going to get you there. As I indicated, we do have three locations. We also have public safety um, locations as well, and uh, our VP of Workforce will talk about that. And one of the things that most people do not know is that we are noted as the number one online community college in Pennsylvania. So we also offer virtual as well as face-to-face, -face, hybrid, synchronous, meaning you're on Canvas or Zoom at the same time with classmates and asynchronous when you go on at your own leisure. One of the things that I want to talk about is affordability. I don't know about you, but I have lots of student loans. When I went away to college and I went and got a master's degree, a law degree, and a PhD. Uh, and student loan debt is, is unfortunate for many because you can't start out in the American dream when you come out of college and six months later there is a, a bill from the Department of Education student, lo student Loan Servicing that says it's time to pay. And so one of the things that people really don't understand is the affordability factor of Bucks County. Every single college credit that we provide transfers, Westchester, DelVal, Drexel, Temple, Yale, Princeton, all of our college credit transfers. And the thing that people don't understand is if you have transferability of your credits, you can take those credits for $165, right, a, a credit, $165 a credit, and save yourself from having to pay $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 per credit. Here's an example. You come to us, full-time tuition, $6,500. Go to a local university, $11,000, Temple, $18,000, all the way down to Delaware Valley University, $45,000. I'm not even going to get on what Drexel costs. But that is a lot per year. And that is only tuition. We're not talking about fees. We're not talking about books. We're not talking about staying in the residence hall, those kinds of things. Click through. We have these transfer pathways. And the one thing that I would hope people to understand is that a transfer pathway means that we have a specific agreement with that university that does things like you're duly admitted. You're, you are duly admitted to Westchester and Bucks County Community College as a freshman. You take classes with us. You will have junior standing when you get there. And then they're going to give you scholarships. So if we go back to the next, go to the next one. No, nope. took it out. Go one more back. There you go. Here's an example. Del Valley University. If you finish with us, come out with an associate's degree, they're going to discount their tuition by 50%. So you have the opportunity to save $117,000 by attending Bucks County Community College. Now, affordability may not be of interest to some, may be of interest to, to others, but I'd like to have um, our Vice Provost Jody Suter to talk a little bit about 
how we can help you as you are in high school to get credits while you're enrolled, and then how we can help you to gain credits while you come back and forth from college. Thank you, Dr. Ganther. So uh, I don't think we're as much of a secret as we used to be. But certainly, in terms of dual enrollment, that's something that we're very passionate about. We're in year two of a major expansion of our dual enrollment offerings. And just for a moment, what, what the heck is dual enrollment? When we talk about high school students taking college classes, legitimate college classes, while they're still in high school, that's our dual enrollment program in a nutshell. But it's so much more than that. It's a partnership. We specifically reach out to the school districts in this county with whom we wish to partner and bring up these opportunities for high school students to get that leg up. And I'm happy to say, as was already noted earlier, Council Rock is one of those new options for us. And we're really excited about what we're going to do together in that regard. Think of it this way. A high school student sequentially figuring out that schedule that was up there earlier, trying to figure out how are we going to find opportunities to maximize both what you're taking here and what you want to get at that college destination, it's something called dual credit. We have courses already offered to every college student on our campuses that can double count in your high school curriculum so that, guess what, now you're getting high school credit and college credit. You're accelerating your pathway to that college or university. Now, as Dr. Ganther mentioned, those credits go anywhere. It could be, certainly we hope, that a number of the students that are embarking on dual enrollment are going to stay at Bucks County Community College. We happen to think we're pretty great at that. But if that's not the option, if it's, you know what, your heart's set on Yale, great. Dual enrollment can still help with that student. So it's something that we really think is, is a great level or a great opportunity to engage students early on, get them into the college classroom, get them that exposure, and then get them going to that next step. And certainly, once the student graduates high school, they move on, they have that college credit, we issue that transcript, whether they go to Bucks or elsewhere, Bucks is always going to be here for that student. Because from the second they were a dual enrollment student with us, they are a Bucks student. And we take that seriously, too. So it's really an exciting program. It's something that you know I think that we're going to see a lot of traction with, especially here in Council Rock. Uh, and I'm, trust me, I'll be here for anyone who has any questions about dual enrollment. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am, I think, the last speaker, so I literally stand between everyone and the rest of your evening. Um, real quick, um, I am the mother of a dual enrollment student at Bucks. She earned 15 credits in dual enrollment while she was a junior and senior at New Hope Solbury High School. She used those um, classes to determine if she wanted to major in business or in biology. She got a full ride to Ursinus College. It was a D3 athlete in track. And she graduated last year, and in about a week, she's going to start in the physician's assistant program at Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine, where she also received a scholarship. So she did that getting her start at Bucks. So just a little personal anecdote to, to uh, endorse my uh, fellow VPs programs and Bucks as, as well. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about pathways to employment because we know that there are multiple ways um, that people get to that dream job of theirs. For some of the students, it's a uh, two-year degree. Some of them, it's a four-year degree. Some of them, they take short-term training and they go right into the profession that um, they would like for um, at least the start of their career, because I believe that people change jobs about 13 times this year, up from seven when, uh, when I was a youngster. Additional professional certificates that we have are um, locomotive, commercial driver's license, um, licensed practical nurse, we have CompTIA and a number of other um, IT programs that students can uh, participate in. And to give you an idea of what we're talking about, we have an industrial maintenance program and metalwork program, they're both 12 weeks. The cost for those programs are $6,500.
And the, the students have about 80 employers vying for them to come work for them for free, um, around $41,000 a year plus benefits to start. Going down the list a little bit, if you'd like to be a commercial truck driver, because I think we all know about supply chain now from COVID years, um, it is a four-week training program, $5,720. Your return on investment is an average starting salary of about $65,000, going up to, I believe Walmart is offering $110,000 to start to drive a truck. So. Um, locomotive and locomotive engineer, similarly, 11-week program and a $72,000 average starting salary. Now you can see up there that in addition to our alternative credit or our training programs, you can add short-term credit certificates, if you like, such as a management certificate, so that you um, can excel in your chosen career. We talked a little bit about safety earlier. Um, what you may not know is that we train all firefighters in Bucks County. So if a firefighter responds to an emergency or to a house fire, hopefully not yours, um, chances are they were trained by us. We graduated 130 firefighters just last night. Starting salary for a firefighter if they're in a career fire department is $94,000 a year. We are very excited that we have a very new partnership with the 19 Philadelphia trade unions for our building and construction trades program. This program is a pre-apprenticeship program, gives students the skills that they need to, that lead to an automatic interview with the unions and then a career um, with all of the benefits that union employment affords. And this is our last feature program. We have a partnership with Estee Lauder. You may have heard of them. Um, what you may not know is that they have a very large distribution facility here in the county. They came to us and said, we have a worker shortage. We need supply chain professionals. How can we create a pipeline of people so that we're not just standing in line waiting you know, for the chosen workers to select us as their choice employer? So. We have a supply chain pathway, two years at Bucks in a business administration degree, on to Temple for two years, and then employment with Estee Lauder. The tuition at Bucks, if selected into this program, is fully covered by Estee Lauder. When, you go to, when the students go to Temple, they hire them 25 hours a week, and they get on their tuition reimbursement. So they come out of college with a a renowned global supply chain degree from Temple's Fox School of Business, no debt, and a job. And last but not least, we just opened our Center for uh, Advanced Technologies in Bristol that services all of our programs and um, provides us the capacity to continue to grow and serve folks here in the county. Thank you. So, Bucks is a place where we want people to come. And even if they don't know what they want to do, that's okay. We'll help you figure it out. If you know what you want to do, that's okay too. We'll help you get there faster. But the one thing that I want to share with all the families is this. There are only two things that I cannot guarantee that your son or daughter will experience at Bucks County Community College in the next two years. That's fraternities and sororities and dorms. Everything else we have, events, clubs, organizations, our uh, athletics programs are stellar. Matter of fact, we're the second seed for the small college world series. Um, Bucks County Community College softball team also in the world series. So we have everything that any student could possibly think of and want, excursions, uh, externships, internships, you name it, we have it. Because my guarantee to every student that comes to us is that I want you to have the time of your college life because you can't take those years back. So I want to make sure that if every student who's interested in coming to Bucks County Community College is going to have the time of their life. And it's always a 50-50 thing. We're going to do everything we can to make sure that your experience with us is a good one. You got to meet us halfway. If you're interested, you're ready to get engaged, you're ready to participate, 
You may not know what you want to do. We'll help you figure it out, and we'll help you be successful. Because we, Bucks County Community College, is the bridge to your next level of success. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. And a thank you to each of our presenters tonight. This certainly is an exciting time for our high schools and our high school students, particularly our seniors. And I hope that the energy and vitality of our programs were evident tonight. As I said earlier, there in just 22 days, we will say so long to the class of 2023, and the incoming class of ninth grade students will be soon known as the class of 2027. We are extraordinarily proud of all of our graduates and the hard work they have invested in their future. Their success is shared by every educator at both Council Rock High School North and Council Rock High School South. The parents, principals, teachers, advisors, coaches, support staff, office staff, everyone represented here this evening walk alongside our high school students every single day, including the final walk to, to accept their diploma. On behalf of Council Rock High School North and Council Rock High School South and all of our schools, including our 10 elementary schools, two middle schools in the Star Center, thank you for letting us share through these forums how we continue to keep students first always. Thank you for being here and have a good night. <laughs>